Good afternoon, and welcome to St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church. Thank you for joining us today, and welcome, no matter if you are here in person or watching online. We are gathered to celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday. The readings may be found on page nine of the bulletin, which is now our permanent worship aid. Please remember to take your bulletin home with you or dispose of it in the narthex as we cannot use them again. Our parish family has always been tremendously generous throughout the holiday season, especially during Christmas. For those of you who have brought toys for our KOC toy drive this weekend, thank you. This is the last weekend to assist those in need of making a wonderful Christmas for their families this year through the Ladies of Charity Children Christmas Gift Donation Drive. More details can be found on page four of the bulletin and the link to give online can be found on our website as well. If you are looking for a great stocking stuffer, please come to the front desk of the parish this week and pick up your 2021 St. John car raffle tickets. This year, we will be raffling a brand new Volkswagen, the ID4, their first ever all electric production vehicle. Tickets are $20 a piece or a pack of six for $100. Our pastor, Father Tom, will pull the winning ticket on Holy Saturday, April 3rd, 2021. To see pictures of this amazing vehicle and for more information, please visit our website. We are blessed to have you here again at St. John the Evangelist. We continue to provide a safe and healthy mass environment with your assistance in respecting the lives of all around you. Reminders of some of our policies that we have enacted to ensure your safety include continuing to wear masks properly over your mouth and nose at all times that you are within the church facilities, including during mass. Shields are not considered replacements for masks, so a mask must also be worn. We also stay a respectful social distance from other individuals and families, and receiving communion should be in the hand with your mask on. Once you have received the host, please move to the side to remove your mask and consume it, then placing your mask back on. If you feel compelled to receive communion on the tongue, we ask that you please wait at the end of the priest's communion line. Our Eucharistic ministers can only provide communion in the hand, and out of respect for the life and health of all our parish family, we hope that you would wait until all others have received before taking communion then from the priest. And providing your generous offerings to our ushers at the exit doors of the church as you depart. You will see that the back wing doors are now available for your exit only after mass concludes. Ushers will be posted there as well. Would you please kindly take a moment now to ensure that your cell phone is powered off? Thank you. And thank you for respecting the holy integrity of our Mass by remaining through the closing hymn. Our celebrant for this Mass is our pastor, Father Tom. Would you now please turn to the front page of your bulletin and join me in praying our parish prayer for peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, thank you for all creation. In the spirit of Jesus of Nazareth, and all teachers of peace who inspire the many faith traditions. Help me and all the people of the world learn how to replace hate, war, oppression, and division with love, peace, freedom, and reconciliation. Help me to embody your love in my relationships with my family, friends, strangers, even my enemies. I commit myself to this sacred task throughout my life so let it be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand and join in singing our processional hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, found on page 10 of your bulletin. Page 10.
Good afternoon. My friends, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. It's great to see all of you as we come together to celebrate this third Sunday of Advent. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate it worthily, let us first call to mind our sins and ask God for His forgiveness. mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem like a bride bedecked in her jewels, as the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all nations. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for a testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you so we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize the one who's coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. An older couple was out to dinner to celebrate their wedding anniversary. All throughout the evening, the husband was rather unpleasant to his wife. As they were driving back home, they were pulled over by the police. The officer asked the husband who was sitting behind the wheel if he knew why he got pulled over. 
As a matter of fact, I don't, said the husband. You were speeding, going 65 miles an hour in a 45 zone, said the officer. No, I wasn't, said the husband. I was going 45. No, you were going 65. No, I was going 45. The officer and the man argued like that for a few moments, after which the wife leaned over and said to the officer, Officer, there is no winning an argument with my husband after he's had too much to drink. <laughs> So fellas, be careful how you treat your wives on their wedding anniversaries. <laughs> Some of you may have heard about the small Norwegian town of Rukon, which was in the news a few years ago. Situated between steep mountains, for six months every year, the little town is shrouded in semi-darkness as the great peaks cast their shadows over the terrain below. And during the winter months, the only way the residents of the town can get a dose of sunlight is to take a cable car ride to the top of a nearby ridge. That is until one October day, when the entire village assembled to witness a miraculous event. For the first time ever, Faint rays from the winter sun reached the town's market square. But how did it happen? What brought the town out of the shadows and into the light? Believe it or not, a local artist devised a plan to install three giant mirrors high on the mountain. The solar-powered, computer-controlled mirrors steadily tracked the movement of the sun across the sky reflecting its rays down onto the square and bathing it in a bright sunlight. And now, finally, Rukan has found its place in the sun. On that October day, to mark the occasion of the mirror's dazzling debut, a band performed the popular song, Let the Sunshine In. The cheering townspeople some on beach chairs and donning sunglasses watched that first moment as the sun crept from behind a cloud to hit the mirrors and reflect down onto their families, neighbors, and friends below. One woman said, who witnessed that first light, before when it was a fine day, you knew that the sky was blue and you knew that the sun was shining but you couldn't quite see it. It was very frustrating. And now this feels warm, she beamed. It will be lovely to come out for an hour and feel this warmth on my face. My friends, don't you think we take sunshine for granted sometimes? In today's gospel, John the Baptist is described as a man sent by God as a witness to speak for the light so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. John the Baptist proclaimed the light that was to come in the person of our Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now God is sending us out into the world to be witnesses to the light of Christ. You shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth, says Jesus to us, his followers. You and I are called to go out to minister in love and to bind up wounds, to be a sign of unity and reconciliation in a world where people are estranged from one another, married couples, families, races, nations, churches, we are called to go out as witnesses to what God is doing through the light of Christ to harmonize all of humankind in peace, brotherhood, and love. We anticipate with joy the coming of Christmas. When the Christmas season comes around, we are attracted to the light of Christ. We find comfort in the sunshine of Christmas goodwill. 
But when the holy day is over, we tend to put the Christmas spirit back on hold again. The day after Christmas, many will throw away the Christmas tree, take down the lights outside, pack up everything that reminds us of Christmas, including the spirit of Christmas. In giving his son as the light of the world, God's purpose is to transform us into the children of light, giving us the power to radiate his love from moment to moment and for a lifetime, not just for a few weeks in December. Christmas is just a couple of weeks away. Why not begin our preparation now? Why not begin today to let the light of the Lord shine through you as you offer the peace of the Christ child to your family and neighbors, wherever they may be? Why not begin today with a holy hug for your spouse, your children, your parents, friends? Why not reflect the light of Christ through your kindness and forgiveness, even if it's not deserved? Your generosity, care, joy, optimism, and hope. In his book, Letting God Bless You, John Killinger concludes with the challenge, permit God to bless you. Don't look around you and think how hard life is. Look around and see how filled with mystery and goodness it is. See how wonderful the world looks when you know God is at work redeeming it and setting up the anti-structures so that humility and purity and compassion and longing for justice and peace will all be fulfilled and rewarded in the internal scheme of things. Give thanks to God for the richness of our existence. Then look around to see who you can share it with. That will make you even richer. If you will learn to live this way every day, you will always have a song in your heart and the path before you will be lined with flowers. Joy will spring up inside you like a fountain and you will lie down to sleep at night with peace in your soul. This Advent, my friends, let us make the critical choice of permitting God to bless us and to fill us with a new sense of hope and purposeful living. We can reflect light into the dark places of this world in these difficult times and change some things in some people. Perhaps others may see what we do and do likewise. Let us now together profess our faith I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Filled with the good news of the Lord's coming, we dare to present our needs and those of all the world. Our response will be, graciously hear us, O Lord, that the church may teach the world the patience it needs to await the coming of the Lord of justice, peace, and life. We pray to the Lord. Graciously hear us, O Lord. That through the prayers of Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of all America, our land may be protected and blessed. We pray to the Lord. Graciously hear us, O Lord. For our parish family of St. John, that we give thanks for the freedom to worship our God in peace, but also in remembering those who are prohibited from their worship, we pray to the Lord. Gracious to hear us, O Lord. For our troops and their families, for first responders and health care workers, for the unborn and their parents, for all victims of abuse, that they may be created anew in the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Graciously hear us, O Lord. For worshipers who are praying online, that they may be comforted and assured that we are all one body of Christ, experiencing God's presence in the same sacrifice of the Mass, we pray to the Lord. Gracious to hear us, O Lord. Remember, we remember those who have died, especially John Goody, Carolyn Deering, Dominic Colantoni, Lisa Ambrosic, Fred Shimatero, and all the holy souls in purgatory, that God will welcome them into the company of the saints forever. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray especially for our parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray in a special way for the little baby, Goner Wolfel, for God's blessing and healing. We pray to the Lord. Graciously hear us, O Lord. In a moment of silence, let us present to God all of our intentions. We pray to the Lord. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Loving Father, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Keep us faithful and true to you this Advent. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As a reminder, please hold your offertory gifts until the end of Mass. An usher will be at the exit doors of the church to receive your generosity. Our offertory hymn can be found on page 11 of the bulletin. Lo, how a rose, page 11. Oh 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis L. Pope and Frank our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. now pray together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graci graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now share this peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn can be found on page 13 of the bulletin. See us, Lord, about your altar, page 13.
must bow all things on earth with one accord like those in heaven shall call you Lord come in your holy might we pray redeem us for eternal day defend us while we dwell below from all assaults of our dreadful to God Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace. Have a beautiful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Please join in singing our closing hymn found on page 14 of the bulletin. People look east, page 14. People look east, the time is near. Keep the watch when night is dim. One more light the mole shall brim, shining beyond the frosty weather. Bright as sun and moon together, people look east and sing today. Love the star is on the.